Tottenham Hotspur are on the hunt for new investors, boldly aiming for a staggering valuation of nearly four billion. But does this ambitious target truly reflect performances on and off the pitch? Or is four billion a massive overreach? In this video, we'll uncover how the Premier League's biggest clubs have been valued over the last decade and dive into five compelling methods for valuing Spurs. Join us as we determine whether any of these approaches can truly justify such a monumental price tag. Do you like a billion to spend? Um, not necessarily. Before we tackle Tottenham's case, let's look at how the other Premier League giants stack up. Back in 2015, Man City's parent company sold a 13% stake for 265 million, valuing the City Football Group at 2 billion. Spurs North London rivals Arsenal then followed suit. First, Alisher Usmanov's red and white holdings up their stake by 15% in 2016, before Stan Kroenke bought out 30% of shares for 550 million. City Football Group sold a further 10% stake to Silver Lake Capital for 389 million in 2019, upping the group's value to just under 4 billion. Then we had Todd Bowley's Clear Lake Capital swoop in and buy 100% of Chelsea for 2.5 billion. And finally, in 2024, Ineos, led by Sir Jim Ratcliffe, invested 1.3 billion in Manchester United for a 29% stake, valuing the club at 4.5 billion. So if Spurs are looking for a 3.75 billion valuation, what ways can they prove it? First up, let's look at revenues. Tottenham's revenue has been on a meteoric rise, reaching a record-breaking 550 million in 2023. Match day income nearly tripled over the decade, thanks to increased capacity at the new stadium and consistent European football. Spurs also banked over 55 million in 2023 from competing in the Champions League reaching the round of 16 before falling to AC Milan. Premier League TV money generated 148 million despite the club finishing four places lower due to an increase in the value of underlying rights. And commercial revenues have skyrocketed from 43 million a decade ago to 228 million, fueled by improved partnerships and maximizing stadium use. And this doesn't look to be stopping anytime soon with Spurs signing controversial new deals with cryptocurrency firms like Kraken. So the top line's on the up, but what does that mean for valuation? Taking the revenue in the year of those recent transactions, we can then calculate the revenue multiple, which gives us a range from under four for Arsenal back in 2017 to almost seven times for the Ineos Man United deal. Taking a weighted average over these deals leaves us with a revenue multiple of 5.7x. Using that multiple, Spurs' valuation ranges from 2.5 billion, based on 2022 revenue without Champions League, to 3.1 billion with it. Close, but still a ways away from that 3.7 billion target. While reportedly the most common metric for football club valuation, revenue alone doesn't tell the whole financial story. So let's dig into the bottom line. There are many different metrics of profit that we can look at. Today we're exploring EBITDA, and operating profit, which factors in the cost of the stadium and transfer fees. To break down EBITDA, let's first tackle staff costs. The wage bill has grown 10% annually as Spurs have continued to invest in the team, going from 100 million a decade ago to over 250 million in 2023. But as a proportion of revenue, Spurs are still one of the stronger performers at 46% of revenue. Spurs have impressively kept this below 50% for seven of the last eight seasons. Following that, we have operating expenses. These increased sharply following the exit from White Hart Lane, and by 2023, these had reached 170 million, fueled by the increased operating costs of running the new stadium and competing in the Champions League. But at EBITDA level, Spurs have consistently been in the black. So how would this translate to a price tag for the club? The multiples here are much more volatile. That alone emphasizes caution when reading too much into this metric, but if we were to take a weighted average, that would give us a 33.6x multiplier. Applying that yields a much better result for Spurs. 3.9 billion based on 2022 to 4.3 billion on 2023. That gets Spurs over the line even in the absence of Champions League football. 
But is this method reliable given its volatility and the fact it ignores two of Spurs' biggest expenses, the cost of building the new stadium and transfer fees? Starting with facilities, the financial cost of the new stadium is evident, with these around 73 million a year since 2020. And on top of that, we have transfer fees. Having started with 54 million of net income in 2014 from the sale of Gareth Bale, the transfer costs have steadily increased, surpassing 100 million in 2023 with big ticket investments in Richarlison, Christian Romero and Eve Basuma. However, Spurs could well be back in the green next season following Harry Kane's big money move to Bayern Munich. This one-two punch, however, has seen Spurs fall from consistent profits to four years of consecutive losses. While Spurs aren't at risk from PSR due to the exclusion of the new stadium build, it shows why profit metrics aren't frequently used for valuation for football teams. You can't apply a multiple to a negative number. This isn't the only traditional valuation method that falls down when it comes to football clubs. We have the same problem when it comes to looking at cash. One common valuation method is a discounted cash flow, a DCF, which looks to value a company based on the future flows of cash into the business. We can factor in three main categories, cash from operations, transfer fees, and stadium and facilities. Cash from operations, driven by EBITDA line items, has been strong. Operational cash has flowed into Spurs every season but one, raking in a massive 1.2 billion over the decade. But what about transfers? Spend has increased in recent years, with over 106 million alone departing in 2023. Across the 10 years, that's 307 million of transfer cash out the door. And then we have to factor in the new stadium. Unsurprisingly peaking in 2017 to 19 with the massive cost of the new ground, Spurs have continued to spend on their facilities after the ground has opened. In total, a further 1.4 billion spent. Add those all up and we see cash spend in six of the last seven seasons, totaling 531 million out the door. This makes a discounted cash flow valuation challenging as even after the stadium opened and reached capacity, cash has continued to flow out. So for us, cash flows are out of contention. But for all the methods we've looked at so far, there is one key flaw. They don't factor in the club's assets. A more sophisticated model developed to specifically value football clubs is the Markham Multivariate model, which factors in the club's assets and operational strength, as well as revenue. We start with revenue and add in net assets, giving 1.2 billion when combined. This is then adjusted to factor in profitability versus revenue, stadium utilization versus capacity, and wage efficiency, again versus revenue. The result? a 2.1 billion valuation, significantly below Tottenham's target. While all of these have been based off historic financials, what do other experts think? A number of sources provide their own valuation for the big European teams. We can take valuations derived from Forbes, Football Benchmark and Sportico, translate them to pound sterling and that yields a consensus range of 2.5 to 3 billion again. After exploring five valuation methods, only the EBITDA approach delivers on Spurs' target valuation. All other methods are at least half a billion off their desired value. So Daniel Levy and co could be in for a hard task to get a deal with their target value. But remember, a club's true value is ultimately what someone is willing to pay. And as we alluded to before, Spurs continue to improve their commercial strength with new partnerships with controversial firms like Kraken. So if you want to find out more about the rewards and risks of these deals, you can check out this video here. But with that, we're out.